Amanda from The Fundamental Home and I am here getting ready to make my vegetarian chili. Only I'm throwing some ground beef in it so it's not going to be a vegetarian version um, but you can make it as a vegetarian chili so I'm going to show you what we do. Okay? First thing we're going to do is we have our big pot right here and I have it um, just sitting here empty, completely empty. And what I'm going to do to start it is I have some oil and I'm unscrewing the top here. I'm just going to throw a little oil in the pan and I really just need enough to um, go across the bottom here just so what I put in the bottom won't stick. And there it is. And so what I'm going to put in is uh, one onion and I've sliced it. I'm going to try to squeeze it to separate the little ringlets and I probably should have waited till it was already hot, but I didn't, so no big deal. I'm just going to squeeze all this out here. It's going to take me a second to do it one-handed. <laughs> but uh, anyway, probably just going to have to let these fall and um, get my spatula and break them up a little bit when I'm not holding the camera. But anyway, there's my onion. Put a little more. I actually have, that was only half but I'm sure you're tired of watching me split up. Oh, actually this one's coming apart a lot easier. So, here's the other half. I don't know why I always hold it sideways, but you don't have to really slice it thin. I mean, it really just depends on how chunky you want your onions to be. Here in a little bit, I'm actually gonna puree this in my food processor because um, in my family, a lot of people don't like it so chunky. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on while I, while I wait. But anyway, so I have one whole onion in here. You can slice it however thick you want. It's up to you. Um, but I try to keep it the same size as my peppers. Now my peppers, you will recall, here's my bag of peppers. See my bag of frozen peppers? I actually have a video I'm going to link up at the top of the screen where I froze, cut and froze those peppers. I have these peppers and I'm just going to take myself a little handful and I'm going to try to have uh, about one whole pepper's worth of sliced peppers. And you just kind of eyeball it. I really like to try to make it about even the same amount of peppers as I have onions. Um, it's looking about half and half, I think. And remember, this pan isn't hot yet because I just turned it on, so don't worry about me sticking my hand in here. But it's going to get hot. Okay. Anyway. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cook the peppers and the onions until they are nice and soft and a little bit brown. And uh, then we'll go into the next step. Okay, and while my onions and peppers are cooking down, I'm going to show you the other ingredients you need. Right here we have whole oregano, ground cumin, I use a little garlic powder, black pepper, chili powder, two cans of diced tomatoes, two cans of black beans, and one can of mild chili beans. So you can use any beans you want, you just want three cans worth. So these are our other ingredients. We're gonna add some water in too, but these are the things you're gonna need to add. While I'm in here making chili, Brianna is at the computer working on her new project, which is her Brianna B. Photography Facebook page. She put up a picture the other day. Well, actually, I think it started that Rick and I put up a picture that she had taken when we were headed to a party the other day. And it kind of blew up like wildfire. I think we put it on Instagram. So if you go to the Fundamental Home Instagram page, you'll see it's a picture of a house with clouds behind it. It's really beautiful. But um, a couple of people got a hold of it, shared it on Facebook, and it's got over a thousand likes or something like that now. She, here she is, she's so happy. And they suggested that she start a photography page, which she did. So she's in there working on it because she started it last night and I think she wants to make an Etsy store where she can sell prints. So we'll see how you can see she's happy. So let's go look at her channel. We'll go look at it. It's a little dark in the house because I think clouds have rolled in. I'm like a shadow. <laughs> she's my shadow. She's always my shadow. So let's go look at her channel. We'll go look at it. Okay, so here's her Brianna B. photography page, and that's the picture that she took that everybody liked. So she's this really... one, not that one, this one. Oh, she's pulling it up. There's the picture everyone liked. And she just posted another picture, which is her colorful cacti picture. You can see it scrolling down right there. And then there's my little logo. I, that's probably not going to be it forever. It's just for now. For now. She's got a couple other pictures that she wants to. Um, get ready and have done so 
anyway, that's her new uh, page. I keep saying channel, her new Facebook page. So you can see that the peppers and onions are kind of turning brown and they're getting much softer. Um, they're not quite where I want them to be yet. They're still a little firm. I actually had them on probably a little too high heat because they browned quickly. Um, but I'm still, I turned it down and I'm gonna let them sit here and get a little bit softer before I put them in the food processor because I really want them to be nice and soft when I uh, do my next step. So the end the food processor, food processor is the next step. Okay, I think it's gotten to where it is nice and soft. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this really gooey, soft peppers and onions. I'm gonna put them in my food processor and pulse them down until they are good and uh, smooth. I don't let it get completely smooth. I like a little bit of chunk, but it can't be too much chunk because then people won't eat it. <laughs> so, um, and then when I'm done pureeing this, I'm actually gonna puree the tomatoes as well. So we're gonna do that next. Okay, it's, it's still a little hot. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and pour this into the food processor. And I'm going to try to get all those onions in. Oops. And I'm going to take these tomatoes and put them in as well. Because I have a nice big food processor. And I just use my hand can opener here. I'm going to open them up. Pour it in. I should be able to fit all of this in. Um, ooh, I'm, I spilled a little. It's, it's what happens when you rush. Don't rush. But <laughs> it's okay if it's messy. I will be fine. Okay, now we're gonna put this side in. And I'm gonna go ahead and get, add a little water, just so it'll puree a little easier. There we go, we have a fill line, I don't wanna go above that. And we're gonna pulse it. Actually, I'm gonna turn it on and let it puree for a minute. It's gonna get loud. A little messy, but I think we got it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go pour this back in the pan and then we're gonna add our seasoning. I didn't wanna to neglect to show you this, that um, after I poured everything from the food processor into the container, I went ahead and added some more water just to get all this extra goodness. And I like to have a little extra water uh, for just it to be more in the pan. <laughs> so I like actually like my chili a little thinner like soup rather than thick like you would put on a hot dog. This is, this is for something that we would serve as a meal. So it's gonna be a little soupy, but that's how we like it, so. And this is what the puree stuff looks like in the pan. And I'm gonna go ahead and pour this extra water in with all that goodness coming out of the bowl of the food processor. I'm gonna stir it up. Uh, I actually think I'm gonna add a little more water. I, I have kind of an amount that I, this still looks kind of thick and I want it to look like I said, kind of like soup, a little thin. So we're gonna add a little more water and then we will start adding spices. Okay, here we go. I added some extra water and I stirred it up and this is about the consistency I like. It's a little soupy. And I didn't measure how much water I added but my pot actually has a measure on the side. I don't know if you can see that in there. But this, once the water is added and all the uh, puree is in there, it amounts to about two quarts. So it's gonna be two quarts in total. And I turned it, it's about on a medium high. And now I'm gonna start adding my spices. So it's gonna uh, start to simmer, put the spices in, and I'll probably put the hamburger in too. So let's do that next. Okay, and if you're wondering where I got this recipe, this is where I got it. It's Better Homes and Gardens new cookbook. And this is a paperback version that Brianna actually got for Christmas one year, and you can tell it's well-worn. And this vegetarian chili actually was her idea. She decided to make it, and obviously, we've had a long time. And I will link to this recipe in the description box if you want to see it. But I always forget um, how much um, seasonings to add. And I do, do do it a little bit different. They have three to four tablespoons, is it tablespoons? Teaspoons, I thought it was in tablespoons, teaspoons of chili powder. My family likes it mild. I like spicy, Brian likes spicy, the rest of the family not so much. So we do two and a half teaspoons chili powder. And um, obviously uh, rather than broth or uh, and water, we just add water for all of those liquid measures. Um, 
We do dried oregano, it's one teaspoon, one teaspoon cumin and a half a teaspoon black pepper. And that's just what we use. Now this recipe does call for corn as well and we don't have that. It also calls for zucchini and we also don't have that. But I do make it frequently with the zucchini and it tastes really, really good. And you wouldn't believe that this busy zucchini time we just don't have any. So, but it, this is something that I make this time of year a lot because of the abundance of zucchini normally. So, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and put these uh, spices in and then we'll put the hamburger in and it's just about to a simmer. So, we'll move on to the next step. So I just added all the spices and I just throw them all on top and then I give it a good stir to incorporate it all. As you can see, it's already simmering. And I add the hamburger at this point if I'm going to make this a meat chili. Um, I have made it as a vegetarian chili and it's quite tasty without the meat. But I have meat and I, my family likes it with meat just as much as they like it without meat. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and put that in now so that way all of those spices and flavors get incorporated in the meat. So here's my little package of hamburger that I have from last night. Um, I had it in the fridge because I knew I was gonna use it today. I've talked a lot about how I use half a pound of hamburger and chili. And that's because this is really a vegetarian chili and we just throw the hamburger in as extra. It's just a little bit of flavoring. So um, here's how I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna take it and put it in there and stir it up. And you would not believe once the beans are in here how thick and uh, filling this is. You know, the hamburger is just a little something extra for flavor. But it's really, really good once you start adding the beans. So hamburger's in, spices are in. It's It was simmering. I stirred it so it stopped simmering a little bit. But I'm gonna go ahead and put this lid on. Yes, it doesn't match, but that's the lid I used. And I'm gonna turn it up a little bit, get it, get the boiling going, and let it simmer. And we're gonna give it 10 minutes, and then we're gonna add the beans. Okay, it got really dark in here because outside it is storming. It's a really crazy thunderstorm, so you might hear some thunder in the background. But anyway, our 10 minutes is up. Everything is looking really good here. I'm gonna move that over there. I'm trying to stay away so you don't get a bunch of steam. I'm gonna give it a little stir. And our next step is to add all of the beans and it's really not complicated. Just pouring them straight in. I don't drain them first. I am I am uh, splashing a bit, so I need to be a little more careful. But I don't uh, drain them first. I, I just like all of the flavor coming in with the beans added in. These are the Aldi brand. Um, they cost, I wanna say they're 55 cents for a can of beans. I'm usually pretty good at knowing the numbers. And so it's really not very expensive for this entire uh, entire pot of chili. And I think the um, tomatoes were also 55 cents a can or something along those lines. So it's a couple dollars, but it actually lasts quite a long time, especially if you serve it with anything else. A lot of times we like to serve it with baked potatoes or um, when we used to, when we used to not be gluten-free, we used to have it with some uh, crispy French bread. Oh, I've gotten all foggy. Okay, hope that's better for you. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna bring this back up. I'm gonna turn it on high, bring it back up to a, a nice simmer, and it's gonna simmer for 10 minutes and then it's done. It's that simple. It's really not a difficult recipe. It's not an expensive recipe. And uh, it's got plenty of fruits and vegetables in it, and of course it could have plenty more. If I would have had the zucchini, I would have put the zucchini in the food processor, food processor as well. You can hear that thunder. Oh my word. Look at that rain coming down. So this will be a nice night to have this chili, actually. I'll show it to you when it's done after it boils. I'm gonna let it get to a simmer and sit for 10 minutes and then we'll come back and show you the final bowl. Okay, so this is the chili. It's in a bowl and you can see it's a little soupy, but it's not too soupy. There's lots of goodness in there. Oops, Brian is getting ready to eat this. So that's the end of the vegetarian chili. Thanks so much for watching it, you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.